coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers. Best of Oshkosh 2025, reviewing Mosaic. Spira Engineering turns heads with a surprise design. The Hummingbird five-stage purchasing program returns. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sport Plane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we are here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Now let's get into today's stories. The best of Oshkosh 2025, reviewing Mosaic. The long-awaited Mosaic regulation finally published in the Federal Register. Let's take a look at what it means and how it affects you. One, expands LSA definitions and criteria removes the previous 1,320 pound maximum takeoff weight restriction, allows for performance-based criteria to define LSA eligibility, including higher speeds up to 250 knots, and larger aircraft with features like retractable landing gear and constant speed props, permits LSA aircraft to have up to four seats, however, sport pilots are still limited to one passenger, broadens the LSA categories to include fixed-wing airplanes, rotorcraft, and powered lift aircraft, allows for the use of new propulsion systems, such as electric and alternative power sources. Two, expands sport pilot privileges. Allows pilots operating under sport pilot privileges to fly a broader range of aircraft, including many of the new light sport category aircraft and additional normal category aircraft. Retains the current limit of two occupants for sport pilots. Allows sport pilots to operate aircraft at night, operate aircraft with retractable landing gear, and airplanes with constant speed props with appropriate training and endorsements, and introduces limited commercial operations for sport pilots. Three, certification process. Moves towards a statement of compliance process instead of the traditional type certificate and production certificate for LSA aircraft. This aims to streamline the certification process and reduce regulatory burden on manufacturers. 4. Maintenance and Repair Revises privileges for light sport repairman certificate holders to align with the expansion of LSA aircraft categories. Allows light sport repairmen to conduct condition inspections on amateur-built aircraft of the same category and class for which they are certificated. And revises requirements for manufacturer-issued safety directives and for performing repairs and alterations on light sport category aircraft. And 5. Implementation Timeline Pilot Privileges and Maintenance Certification These changes will take effect 90 days after the final rule is published in the Federal Register. And LSA Aircraft Certification Changes These are more substantial changes which will be implemented 365 days after the final rule's publication. After the break, AirVenture 2026 to prominently feature vertical lift. Direct Fly USA proudly introduces the new Alto NG, a single engine, two seat light sport aircraft for the North American market. This simple, all metal aircraft design provides low maintenance cost, easy, comfortable access, and responsive flight controls. Equipped with a Rotax 912 engine and a ballistic parachute, the Alto NG is reliable and safe. Learn more about the Alto NG at directflyusa.com. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. AirVenture 2026 to prominently feature vertical lift. EAA announced that next year's AirVenture, the world's greatest aviation celebration, will be showcasing the vertical lift segment of the industry. Starting with next year's event, aircraft including helicopters and VTOL aircraft will have a dedicated space in AirVenture's Aviation Gateway Park. This space will also feature other elements, such as new and emerging tech, as well as recruitment for new jobs in the industry. EAA will also establish more helicopter landing and parking areas around the event grounds, with easier access to camping. The Chris and Eagle is back. One of aviation's most beloved aerobatic biplanes is now back in production under its original name, the Chris and Industries Eagle. Rights to the Eagle were purchased out of the Aviat collection by long-term admirer Chuck Therio. 
Quote, my vision for Crescent Industries is to carry on our amazing Eagle 2 aircraft with building new kits and parts support, while adding many new mods like carbon and other lightweight newly designed products to support and modify the Eagle 2, also offering quick build and factory assisted aircraft, end quote. Cubcrafters introduces new paint schemes at AirVenture. Cubcrafters, manufacturer of Backcountry Adventure aircraft, announced at this year's EAA AirVenture two cool new paint schemes for 2025, the Signature Evo for Carbon Cubs and the Evolution X for the X-Cub and NX-Cub. The new look brings a modern and creative aesthetic to the company's iconic aircraft to reaffirm its innovative approach to both performance and style. The new paint designs are available for customers who order 2025 model Carbon Cubs and X-Cubs. Sirius XM expands its avionics accessibility. Sirius XM Aviation recently announced a partnership that brings its services to the AF5000 and 6000 avionics produced by Dynan's Advanced Flight Systems. The integration, made possible by a new Sirius XM satellite receiver, is expected to launch in the coming months. The addition of Sirius XM Aviation offers an alternative to ADS-B weather, assisting in areas where ADS-B coverage may be limited or unreliable, such as on the ramp, in the mountains, or in parts of Canada. Pilots also get continuous updates from taxi to shutdown, meaning no airborne-only limitations here. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Spirit Engineering turns heads with a surprise design. Spirit Engineering blew the hangar doors off Oshkosh with its SE-1. The single-seat SE-1 was deliberately kept off the radar until it arrived in Oshkosh, where four aircraft made the cross-country trip from Grand Junction, Colorado, and burned just 88 gallons of gas between them. Spirit Engineering made the aircraft basic in all the right ways. From the engine to the airframe, the SE-1 is a completely clean-sheet, American-made design with no plans for deluxe packages or luxury variants. It features MGL digital instruments, basic VFR capability, and folding wings that function like the Grumman Stow Wing to tuck against the fuselage with just a couple minutes of work. Spirit designed a completely new engine to fit the SE-1's unique requirements. The Spirit V2 is a two-cylinder, four-stroke inverted V that runs on MOGAS or AVGAS. It claims to have been tested far beyond the minimum ASTM requirements and to meet the company's target of 100 mile per hour cruise at two gallons per hour. Spirit received SLSA approval for the build on July 8th and flew the first set of production aircraft just three days later. The plant is already tooling up for multiple aircraft per day with 21 airframes already built. Spirit is slated to open its books in fall 2025 at a ready-to-fly price of just $69,500. After these messages, the Hummingbird five-stage purchasing program returns. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. The Hummingbird five-stage purchasing program returns. Vertical Aviation Technologies has reintroduced its five-stage purchasing program for the Hummingbird helicopter, letting builders eat that elephant one bite at a time with a selection of packages. It's a slick system helping to tame the headaches that accompany the assembly and manufacture of a rotary wing aircraft. Each of the five packages contains one self-contained system or structure, giving builders that much-needed dopamine hit when they cap off a five-figure job and step back to appreciate their work. The first group, $68,750, consists of the documentation, the upper and lower cabin and airframe, landing gear, windscreen, nose, and tail cone. Group two at $91,000 contains the tail and main rotor assemblies, along with all their guts. 
Group 3 at $23,950 contains the fuel system and flight controls, while Group 4, $23,650, has all the instrumentation, electrical, and engine accessories for an IO540. Group 5 is the capstone at $51,900 and contains the cowling, main rotor blades, and seats. All in all, a builder is looking at just a couple grand under $260,000 in 2025 prices. Vertical has a quick build iteration of Stage 1, so builders can start off with a lot of the airframe completed, though it's about twice the cost of the standard kit at $119,900. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.